Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Amanda Carestio. And I'm Kate Zynard. Today on the podcast, we are starting October off by talking about costumes of all kinds, from cosplay to theater, and of course, Halloween. We will share some of our favorite costume memories and talk about our wild ambitions for the future. We'll each share a little something in our Sojo segment, and then we'll ask you to share something too. But first, let's welcome our special guest host, Ginger. Hello. Thank you guys so much for having me today. Oh, thank I'm, you. I'm so excited about this topic. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ginger is one of the hosts of the Quilting Company podcast, and we're absolutely delighted she was willing to come along for this episode. Though May- Meg will be back from her wedding by the time this episode is released, we're recording it early because that pesky move we keep talking about, and it's messing with our schedule. So Ginger's joining us, so you don't just end up listening to me monologue about costumes for 40 minutes, which would is what would otherwise happen. That would be very informative. Yeah. It would be, but probably not as interesting. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but before we begin, how about we do a quick check-in? How's everybody doing? Doing okay. Trying to get excited about fall sewing. Kind of getting there. Working yeah. on it slowly. Working on it slowly. It's still really hot, so. It is. It's really hot. Yeah. Yeah, I know it is. It's hard to think about uh, that when it's still like 90 degrees out I most know. days. <laughs> I know, but then if you wait until the temperature's right, mm-hmm. then you sew something and you wear it for, you know, like, a yeah. month oh, we, and the and weather then changes gone. again. Yeah. Well, and we're, of course, very lucky because we have an issue with our HVAC system here in the office, and our offices are generally sitting at about 80 degrees. Um, so we are, um, well— not particularly pleased with the heat at the moment, <laughs> but I know, we're but hanging maybe, in there. Maybe we can just wear our tank tops all winter. Yes. Well, no, what the, what's going to happen is winter's going to come, and then it's going to be cold be because cold. the heat never goes up high. Anyway. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. But then mm-hmm. also we're moving, so who even knows who what knows? it's going to be like. <laughs> all right. Shall we go ahead and jump in on costumes then? Let's do. All right. Um, I forgot to write a little interesting um, little intro for this. So I'm just going to say we're going to talk about costumes. We're going to talk about all kinds of costumes. And I'm going to start by asking you guys what costuming, costuming experience you actually have. Ginger, why don't you start? Okay. Well, uh, I am, I guess it's so funny. I, I guess cosplay is a big thing. And I myself am more of a casual cosplayer. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely not a full on. I've, I've, I've gone to, for those of you who don't know, cosplay is basically uh, when you attend different uh, conventions and go as um, somebody who you're inspired by or, you know, that type of thing. And these costumes are intense. Um, I've oh, yeah. been able to uh, go to a couple conventions. And um, my real experience, though, is raising a cosplayer. I have a, a 10 year old daughter, Parker, and I have. I, I, when I say make costumes, it's very much like getting a costume either at a, a you know, a, a, getting it from someplace, uh, a secondhand store or someplace mm-hmm. like that, or um, just going to a costume shop, but then embellishing it. Mm-hmm. So I haven't been brave enough. I'm fairly new to sewing. You ladies have been taking me down this path, and I'm loving every <laughs> minute of it. Um, but um, so being able to, you know, really embellish that stuff. So so my experience with costumes in that sense is, is really been a lot in the last like four to five years as my daughter's been really just diving deep into this scene and I'm loving the ride. It is so much fun. Um, And then I myself was a theater major as well. So I went, uh, we had a really small theater down in in Florida where I went to school. And so yet again, I wasn't sewing as much as I was going out to consignment shops and, Mm -hmm. and places like that and really, you know, fitting people and doing that. But yet again, I loved every minute of it, like being able to go and just I'm big on refurbishing stuff and really trying to make it fit for what you need. And that's a great way to do it because you're not wasting fabric and it's very sustainable. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, I love Ginger's daughter, Parker. She is adorable. And she loves all of my same favorite characters. Like all of her cosplay characters are all the Funko Pops that are in my office. Uh, So, um, yeah, we get along great. Oh, yeah. No, we had to go and search because you have your goose one. Mm -hmm. That Oh, my goodness. She did not leave me alone until we found (laughs) it. And I mean, it took us a while to try and find it. But it is her most favorite thing. She has it sitting up, you know, very close by her bed where she can see it every day. <laughs> so thank you. And she adores you guys too, Kate. Oh my goodness. Yep, she loves you. <laughs> oh, well, that just warms my heart. How about you, Amanda? What costume experiencing do you, experience do you have? You know, I feel like my costume experience is like I have a lot of it, but it's all costume light. 
Um, Mm -hmm. Like I never really, I guess, have spent the time to do something that's super detailed. It's more about the kind of last minute um, college party. Right. That, Mm -hmm. um, you know, requires just a little, I don't know, whatever the theme is. And you put together something last minute. So I've done I've done a lot of that. Um, I've done a little bit of kid costumes for Halloween. um, But mostly it's just been kind of fun, frivolous, last minute. That pretty much sums up my my experience. Okay, I have to say I uh, I love a couple years ago. Your kids went as the main characters from uh, Miraculous Ladybug, Mm -hmm. and that was the cutest picture of all time. Her little daughter and her little son as Ladybug and Cat Noir. I just I died. It was so great. So me, of course, we all know this about me. I probably have the most costume experience of probably anybody in the building at the moment. Um, I went to school for costuming. I have built everything from dance costumes to period pieces to, I don't know, um, sock costumes. I've dressed people up like socks before. (laughs) Um, So there you go. Um, I haven't actually done that much costume sewing in the past 10 years or so. Um, I've kind of, you know, at a certain point, you're just like, well, that's not a challenge anymore. So, um, but I still, Halloween was always my favorite holiday just because of the dressing up. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, uh, I'm a customer deep in my heart. So there we go. That's me. Um, so I want to go for a second into the difference between say a Halloween costume and a cosplay. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you think about that as different ginger? Well, in my house, we have two holidays. We have the Denver pop culture con that we go to every year. (laughs) And then we have Halloween. Um, Those are the two most important things. Mm -hmm. And um, the way it works is as soon as we're done with one, we're talking about the next. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when pop culture con, it's usually uh, in summerish, you know, beginning of summer. And then when that's ended, Okay, mom, for Halloween, I want to be. So <laughs> they are very different, uh, different things. When you're going to a convention, you know, a lot of times they're more, depending on which one you're going to, Comic Con or those types of things, they're based around comic book characters mm-hmm. most of the time. So usually that's what you're dressing up as. So I think of cosplay as being a much more, um, it's almost like a tribute to, you know, something that you love. And and, and it, to me, when you're building out those costumes and, and you want to be as authentic as possible, which I think you do in a Halloween costume too, mm-hmm. but there's there's just something about because there's such a rich history behind a lot of these comics. Um, so for me, I feel like that's one of the big, big differences. I think that's I think that's exactly spot on. That's what I would say that um, the cosplay characters, you tend to pick a character and it's possible you'll show up as something generic. You know, we were just talking about my anime convention, how mm-hmm. sometimes people just show up wearing a kimono or um, they might be a unidentified member of them of the Full Metal Alchemist military police mm-hmm. or whatever, but most of the time they are somebody very specific, and you get some of that with Halloween for sure. I mean, I've had plenty of Spider Men show up at my door, mm-hmm. but um, you also get you know the generic witch, the mm-hmm. generic princess, the not so specific thing, and I think that's a huge difference between like a basic Halloween costume and what a cosplay actually is. Yeah, well, we're definitely blurring the lines a little this year at our house because (laughs) she has picked a costume this year. At least this is the one that's sticking. Um, (laughs) She wants to go. She loves Stranger Things, and I'm probably like the worst mom in the world for letting my 10-year-old watch it, but she loves it. All of her friends are watching it too, so I don't feel that bad. But uh, she really wants to go as Eleven because they did the whole 80s Mm -hmm. outfit for uh, Eleven in this past season, and she is obsessed with everything neon, and she has a bazillion scrunchies that she's just loving and all this. So, yeah, so we're, yes, we're reliving scrunchies. the 80s. Um, I feel like you could get a really good thrift store score for that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, it'd be fun to make something from scratch, but yeah. I feel like you, there, oh, yeah. you could find something really I don't good. know. The 80s are coming back so hard. Mm-hmm. There might yeah. not you be might any not even, 80s clothes in the I thrift store anymore. by the time anymore. you get there. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I, full confession, we did find a really cute little jumper that they had at, like, one of the local – They the you know those traveling Halloween stores yes. that are around? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was one right across the street. As soon as she saw the sign go up, she was stalking them. Like, she was yeah. literally like, are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? <laughs> and, and finally, when they were done, she went in and she saw that 
and lost Fun. it. She was like, was oh. it meant specifically for that? Yes. Nice. Yeah. And nice. that's the thing. It's like nowadays you have to kind of weigh your options yeah. on like, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's probably cheaper because it was like maybe a $30 mm-hmm. costume. Mm-hmm. I'd spend just as much as that, you know, going and making it and then mm-hmm. to save myself a little bit of time. Right. But right. it's super cute. And, and yeah, she's oh, got the gosh. whole thing plotted out. But I do feel like that's kind of a blurred line there because yeah. it is such a specific character. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I do think that sometimes there's really no difference between a cosplay and a Halloween mm-hmm. costume. It's just what you're doing in it. Because, you know, if you're cosplaying, you're at a convention, and if you're wearing a Halloween costume, you're trick-or-treating or at a Halloween party. And I sometimes I think that's literally the only difference. I certainly wouldn't object to taking a cosplay that I had made and popping it on for a Halloween mm-hmm. party yeah. or vice versa. Yeah. I mean, if it was appropriate for cosplay, which, you know, may or may not be. So it sounds like... Um, you maybe have never actually made a Halloween or cosplay costume from scratch, Ginger. Does that sound right? Probably, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely more about like refurbishing stuff mm-hmm. and then the details too. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I definitely think for uh, the Denver Pop Culture Con, probably the closest I got to it was um, uh, my costume actually, which is the first time I ever actually dressed up. My uh, Parker had gone as Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. and I created a goose costume, which was so cute. So it much was fun. adorable, and it was one of those like it wasn't super in your face. Like, I ended up just making the cat ears and the um, mm-hmm. all of that. So I was. I, I, to me, that's probably the closest that I've been to actually mm-hmm. creating something. And that and was a fantastic costume. I loved that. Is it okay if we show it in our show notes? Oh, definitely. Okay, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we are not shy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good to know. Amanda, have you ever made a costume? Um, from scratch, I have. I think way, 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 way back in, I don't even know what episode, I mentioned my um, toga that I made for <gasps> eighth grade yes. Latin class, which was probably my most kind of historically accurate piece. I did a bunch of research for it, and I still have it. I think I even put up a picture of me wearing it Ooh, I think in you our did. office. And I'm pretty sure I strutted around the office wearing it. I'm pretty sure you did. Um, I also made probably my the best costume I've ever made was an Ursula costume. When I, I guess I was probably 9 or 10 at the time, and we uh-huh. put on a little neighborhood um, play. I don't even know if we ended up putting on the play, but we got dressed up. Oh, yeah. um, and I have to say, I think that the Ursula costume just set the bar pretty high for all of my later attempts. I had um, the best thing about it was the legs that I made were I got all the black tights I had and stuffed them with socks and tied them around my waist. <laughs> nice. And then attached those tentacles to strings on my fingers so I could move them. <gasps> and, oh, how brilliant. And um, and I think I had on a leotard or something. But it was, see, there's there's no going past that. Um, oh, Amanda, please, 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 please tell me your mother has a picture of this. I was just going to ask. ask. I will ask. <laughs> oh, or I will, fingers crossed, everybody. Fingers yeah. crossed. Oh. Um, and I do, my I have uh, more recently made costumes for my kids. As you mentioned, the... Um, uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir, mm-hmm. which Cat Noir was really kind of a just an all black kind of thing um, with separates that we already had. But I did make um, some leggings and a top for the Ladybug costume. Um, I also have made my daughter a I think her first Halloween she was a tiger pig, which <sighs> is our it was our is our dog's nickname. She is um, a little brindle, and but she's shaped like pig with tiger stripes. So okay. <laughs> we kind of built her costume around kind of a blend of like tiger stuff and pig stuff. And then we used that all the next year when she was Peppa Pig for Halloween. And I made her like a little um, red dress with some mud splotches on it. And she had galoshes and it was, it was pretty cute. Um, and I did make a Bob the Builder costume for my middle son. But I think um, I'll talk in a little bit about what our plans are for this year. But I think I'm a little sad because I think my kids are kind of in that. They're definitely into the store-bought costume Mm. mode right Mm -hmm. now. But I do think there's a chance that they might circle back around and get a little bit more into it. Um, But, yeah, now they're definitely about the the Spider-Man costumes with the built-in muscles. Uh Uh It's a big hit around our house. Um, yeah, my so godson he, was a big fan of his uh, BB-8 costume, the inflatable uh, kind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's some fun ones. So yeah, I think that's from talking about like scratch made. That's probably it for me. 
Well, I've obviously made a lot of costumes from scratch, and I'm not going to list them all off (laughs) yeah, um, because that would be ridiculous. But I will mention, Amanda, in reference to your um, Ursula costume, I just remembered as you were talking that when my niece was about three, I made her a Little Mermaid costume, a little Ariel costume, and it was kind of a pain because they, you know, I was sewing with that scale printed yeah. metallic oh, fabric yeah. and it was I know it well. It was kind of hideous but um but it it was awfully cute in the end. Mm. Um so yeah. So as a costumer, I'm always thinking about the kind of things that you have – the considerations you have to take when you're um, making a costume. And theatrical costumes are a whole nother level for that. But um, I think that there are some certain um, things you have to keep in mind when you're building a Halloween costume or a um, or a cosplay costume. And I guess I just kind of want to talk about how, how – what those things are and how they're different. Um, you know, I was thinking, for example – for Halloween here in Colorado, it's usually pretty cold on right, Halloween night. Right, and so yeah. you have to be thinking about how you're going to keep the kid warm out there while you're trick-or-treating, whether it's are you just putting a coat on top of this princess dress or mm-hmm. are you going to build something in to keep it warm? That is the opposite problem you have with cosplay because you're stuck in a convention center right. with a billion people. So you want to make sure you know how to keep cool. So what other things can you guys think of that you need to think about with costumes? I think there's a little more leeway in the Halloween side of things because with cosplay, it tends to be like you want to be authentic. Like Mm -hmm. there's so many little details. And sadly, there are people that will call you out on that. Like, oh, "Oh, well, this isn't long enough or that isn't this or this. You know, and it's not. Whereas with Halloween, I think you get to be a little bit more, you know, know, a little more fluid with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and and then plus I love the aspect of, of Halloween where you can kind of be creative with your ideas and coming up with like a tiger pit or a, you know, a a Mm -hmm. tiger pit or. Or like, something I'm a along tiger those pig. lines. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, no, because I remember one year it was so funny. Like, all I had was like an old ski suit and I had this red sweater and I had a wig that had horns in it. And I was like, I'm going to be a ski devil instead of a ski bunny. You know, <laughs> and, like Cute. those types of things. So it's like, I think you get to have those, those fun. It, it's a cool thing that you can do at Halloween and, you know, trying to get somebody to figure out what is your costume, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, I'm a ski devil, you know? And Though I have to say, there are some m- just magical things people do with that in cosplay. Have you ever seen a set of uh, Disney Princess Stormtroopers? No. <gasps> or actually not Stormtroopers. They're usually, they're usually Boba Fett. They're usually Mandalorians. Okay. They are amazing. Oh. They're in like – they're in all these different colors, and they're and they their armors painted to look like snow. Oh my god, they're so good! Oh, now that you say that, though, I did notice at the last convention I went to, there was a group of princesses that were zombie princesses. Uh huh. So from behind, just beautiful. I mean, gorgeous gowns, and then they turn around and just have these hideous makeup faces, <laughs> nice. and like, oh my god, it was brilliant. It was so great. Yeah. <laughs> or you like get that. the you get the steampunk crossovers, mm. and you know you have like Ladybug and Cat Noir. I mm-hmm. saw one stun up all steampunk. They were so good. Mm. Um. So you. Can can get some really fun crossovers yeah. in the anime world. And I'm sorry, not just anime, but in the con world, right. there are lots of people who find just amazing things. I mean, Hello Kitty Samurai. I've oh. seen Hello Kitty oh, Samurai. Oh man, that sounds so awesome. So good. <laughs> don't want to meet her in a dark alley. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd be kind of delighted to meet her in a dark alley. <laughs> don't know whether to run or just hug her. <laughs> I don't know if she's an evil samurai. I guess that's the that's the question there. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I'm going to go off on a little monologue now, if nobody minds, about theatrical costuming and the considerations you have to take when you're making a theatrical costume. Um, One of the things that I think is very notable about cosplay costumes and Halloween costumes is they are not exactly single use, but they're light use. You know, you wear it for a con, maybe you wear it for every con, but that's still one day a year with basically a year in between to fix any problems you might have with them. Halloween, especially if you're dealing with kids, they're probably going to outgrow their costume in a year, maybe two if you're lucky. So they they're kind of they don't have to be really particularly sturdy um, unless you're expecting to have a lot of people like hugging you or something, which can happen at cons. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're doing a theatrical costume, you have to be thinking about what the actors are doing in their costumes um, and how to make sure that those stay solid, that the seams don't start to come apart. Uh, You have to think about how washable they are because stage lights make you sweat. They make Mm. you sweat a lot. And so you have to know how to get things washed, how often you can get things washed. 
Um, did you have a question, Amanda? No. Nope. You were just looking I at me. I am fascinated. You yeah. are fascinated. All right. I hope everyone else is also fascinated. Um, we once had a um, – we once were doing Pippin, mm-hmm. and the uh, the players were very dancey in Pippin, in this particular version of Pippin. And we had them in these little canvas dance boots. And it was the worst decision we ever made because they wore a whole – Everybody wore at least one hole in those boots every day. Oh, and the poor costume shop crew, including me sometimes, I was dressing, but I still have to do this occasionally, had to take little patches of canvas and sew them on these boots every day. And the hands, our fingers were just half dead because you had to get them all, you know, folded under so you didn't have, you know, fringe shredding out or anything. And oh, God. God, it was awful. And that was something that we should have thought about when we decided (laughs) to buy those canvas boots. But at that point, it was too late to change. So you really have to think about keeping things that will hold up. In in our case, we usually had four to six-week runs. Um, Six week was the longest run we ever did. And, you know, at the end of some of those six weeks, things were looking a little iffy. I don't know how they do it on Broadway when they have – eight shows a week for years at a time. They must just have to remake them, I'm guessing. Have a Um, lot of backups. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of backups. Well, and then you've got the issue with the um, understudies because your understudies Mm -hmm. may not have the same body type as your um, as your actual actors or they might not have this. They might not be the same height. They might not wear the same shoe size. And so you have to stop and think about Am I making a second one of every single thing that they make? How likely it is? Is it? How likely is it that we will need to use a understudy? In our four-week runs, it was pretty rare. On Broadway, happens a lot. Mm-hmm. So you have to be thinking about that sort of, you know, can this be reused? Does does this person need their own special version of this? Um, it's a really – you have to think pretty hard, I have to say, about yeah. uh, theatrical costuming. I do have a question. How do you decide how much detail to put into a thing? Ah, uh, that's the other thing. I forgot to mention that. So you want to have a reasonable amount of detail. But the thing about a theatrical costume is in most cases, if anybody is – if any audience member is more than 10 feet from you – or less than 10 feet from you, something's probably wrong, um, you're going to be at a distance from them. Right. And so things don't need to be absolutely perfect um, and things don't need to be super, super detailed because they're just never going to see super detail. Mm-hmm. Even if you've got a pair of binoculars, there's only a certain amount of detail that you can see from a distance like that. So, you know, you kind of look into what makes sense. You know, if you've got a piece of like already put together lace that has a bunch of detailing on it. Sure, you could put that on a dress, but you're not going to hand make it mm-hmm. because there's just really no point. Mm-hmm. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Um, what about? I mean, since it is from a distance, what about like sh- sewing shortcuts? Was that a? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. What you were some common sh- ones? Um, well, <laughs> um, your hems were always a little. Well, your hems were always finished um, about four minutes before the show started, honestly. Um, So your hems might be a little iffy, though you usually had to hand sew them because you'd see the line of stitching. Mm -hmm. So, but they could be they could be pretty big stitches at times. Mm -hmm. Um, My favorite thing I did a lot of uh, I spent a lot of time quick rigging things, Mm -hmm. so making them so that you could get in and out of them quickly. Yeah, Yeah. Um, a lot of Velcro sewn over buttonholes with buttons sewn on top of the buttonholes. Mm -hmm. Um, Lots of that. Um, yeah, just little things like that. Hmm. So I'm kind of curious, how much consideration, because it's the actor that you're dressing, but you're working with a director and you're working with so many other people. You're working with lighting people. You're working with so many other people. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you weigh whose who's opinion matters the most or, you know, all of that? Or is your opinion the final opinion? Um, well, as a stitcher, my opinion matter, uh, mattered nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, honestly, I think the director was the final say. Um, we would have production meetings, or that that's what you do. You have production meetings, and I, I'm sure you do this in your own job. I mean, I do them with you in your job. Um, we sit down, sit down with the director, the lighting designer, the scenery director, the costume designer. Um, if we've got a dramaturg, you uh, have that person there, assistant director, all of the, uh, the stage manager. Stage manager is very important. Um, and all these people get together in a room, and they talk through the concept of the show, and they kind of figure it all out. And then people go and they do their designs and they bring them back and they all look at them 
as a group and figure out if everything's working together. So things might get changed kind of on the fly, but once you've got that whole concept figured out, then you, as long as you're sticking within that concept, if something gets changed, it's not a big deal. Yeah. And it's funny because uh, for those of the, you that don't know, my day job is a video producer. So I work on the video side of that. And even just work when I was back in college, I did get to work on some indie films and things like that. Cool. And costuming is also yeah. another issue. Um, but it's really interesting because in that case, details do matter. Right. Because a lot of times you Up get those close. tight close ups oh, yes. and you get those things. And um, it's such a much more intimate look into mm-hmm. who those characters are. So it's so funny, like the difference. And then chances are it doesn't need to be something thing where, you know, because the way you film, you're doing, you know, shorter things. And, Mm -hmm. you know, so the wear and tear might not be as bad. um, And there is no rush to like run off stage and, you know, break things off. You never quick break anything in the movies. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and uh, yeah, I think that that's a huge difference between theater and film is just the level of detail you have to have. And um, certainly I always thought about that when I was looking at theatrical wigs, Mm -hmm. because, you know, sometimes you'll have a, a really nice wig with the lace on the front that disguises the hairline, but a lot of times you just pop the thing on and it doesn't look all that, you know, realistic up close, but it's not a huge issue mm-hmm. when you're 20 feet away, 40 feet away, up in the balcony. But, yeah, but a bag wig, wig can kill you in uh, on, on, on film or on, yeah. yep, on screen. Unless I mean, just ask Michelle Williams. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to talk – I think we were going a little bit long on this section. So I just want to talk real quick about some of my favorite places to find costume patterns. Um, We always like to talk about indie pattern companies here on So and Tell. But most indie pattern companies don't make costume patterns, which is totally legit. Yep. But because of that, I'm going back to the big four. Um, Mm -hmm. You can always find good costume patterns at McCall's, Buttrick, and Simplicity. McCall's has the Yaya Han cosplay patterns, which are very specifically designed to be um, versatile. So you can use them for many different things. So if you're looking for some cosplay base patterns, that's a great place to start. I personally love Buttrick patterns because they have really historically accurate um patterns, what, at least their historical versions. You know, some of them are just fantasy stuff, and that's absolutely fine. But they've got really good patterns for um, if you want to be historically accurate, if you want to make a really historical costume. I would just love to say, too, on the topic of Yaya Han, I believe it is um, – those are the branded fabrics that are now available in places yes. like Joanne. Um, and I have to say, I, I don't – Often spend a whole lot of money in that aisle, but I love to go down that aisle yes, and just and touch everything, touch so much everything fun. and yep. you know think about if I was a better planner that I could start my mm-hmm. Halloween costume now. Yes. And but yes. um, I kind of I love that the vibe that that has brought to. Oh, Joanne. definitely! Yep. It's real. It's a really fun aisle. If you've mm-hmm. never checked it out, you should go and just just go through and pet the things. Yes, because the the textures are so interesting. Um, I managed to pick up like a. Just a yard, a, a yard remnant of this kind of knitted. It looks like wire, but it's not. I don't know what it actually is, but it's gold and it looks like chain, chain mail. mail yeah. And I haven't figured so out what cool. I'm going to do with it yet. It might be something for my god kid, but I love it so much. <laughs> I just like to touch it. Um, I also like simplicity costume patterns. I don't have any particular reason to say I love them, except that my favorite dice bag pattern came from a simplicity costume pattern. So there you go. Yep. Um, Vogue patterns don't usually have costume patterns, but they do have vintage looks Mm -hmm. that you can find. So if you're looking for something from like the mid 20th century, Vogue's a great place to go to find those patterns for sure. Um, Also, if you're looking for a vintage pattern and Vogue doesn't have something you like, check out folklore folklore patterns. Folkware. Folkware. Oh, gosh, guys. Sorry. Um, Anyway, check them out. They have – they have wonderful patterns that from that same period of time. They have like 50s, 40s, 20s, 30s stuff. They also have, um, well, it's folkwear. They have um, blouses from Croatia. And right, all over the world. Moroccan burnouses. And right. yeah, like if you're looking for something from a specific area of the world, they've got great patterns. 
Um, Berta Style, which we always want to talk about a little bit, even if Meg's not here, they have a few costume patterns, not a whole lot of them. But if you're looking for a specific kind of base, you should generally check them out because they just have so many different styles. Yeah. You can usually find something that will work for what you're trying to use as a base, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like there's so many kind of stylized pieces yes. that I feel like you can you can often find something that will suit your needs. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Anybody else have any particular costume pattern companies that they really love? I'm, no, I'm kind no of, I was just madly taking mental notes of like, yeah. ooh, check them out, check, <laughs> check them, them out, out. Yeah. check them out. We used a lot of folkwear patterns when we were doing um, – Theater stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's an episode coming up that I know I'm going to end up talking about a folkwear pattern on. So that's your uh, little teaser for Ooh, a couple of weeks. Nice. We were talking about this episode earlier today, and I'm super excited about it. However, before we move on from this topic, I do have something serious I want to say. Um, I want to just make a quick note about cultural appropriation, which is a big problem around Halloween sometimes. So... Wearing other people's cultures as a costume, especially a stereotyped version, but even a loving and accurate representation is cultural cultural appropriation. I'm a white woman, and it's not really my place to speak to the problems with appropriation. But if you'd like to learn more, I'd like to encourage you to check out nativeappropriations.com. It's written by a woman named Adrienne Keene, who is a native Cherokee woman, and she's written extensively about how appropriation is harmful. So remember, there are hundreds of wonderful Halloween costumes that don't depend on wearing someone else's culture. So make your choices and choose your costumes mindfully. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Now that we've done a deep dive into cosplay and historical and theatrical costumes, I kind of wanted to dial it back and talk about costumes in general. Um, Every year I have big plans and then I don't actually plan very well and end up wearing cat ears. Um, That's pretty much my (laughs) go-to. So this is your PSA and also mine as well that it's now October. It's time to get started. You still have time to actually make what you were thinking about making. Um, So with that, I thought we – I've shared a little bit about my favorite costume that I've made for myself, which is definitely the Ursula costume. Um, I have a few runner-ups I could mention, but I wanted to hear from you guys. What are your your favorite costumes for yourself that you've made? Oh, let's see. Back in the mid-2000s, right after Wicked came out, I made ah, myself yeah. an Elphaba costume. Oh, nice. It was one of her school outfits, so it was kind of a 20-style dress with um, I, I put bias strips on it to kind of give it a diagonal look, and it had an asymmetrical hem. Um, and it was kind of awesome. And then I got um, green water-based makeup, and I painted myself green from the tip of my head to the end of my fingers. And... Uh, Everything that and it was not a it did not have sleeves. I just want to make this That's very a lot clear. Of paint. Wow. Yeah, and then I got myself all dressed up, put on my wig, put on my hat. I made the hat, and then I realized that I uh, really didn't have anywhere to go. <gasps> so <laughs> I don't even remember what I did. I think I went to visit my friend's parents or something. <laughs> All dressed up, nowhere to go. But I really felt good about the fact that I had done it. So uh, are there pictures? I don't know if there are. There must be pictures somewhere. Oh, yeah. you got to find I, them. I'll see if I can find them. Yeah. How about you, Ginger? Uh, well, it's so funny. Growing up, my mom, actually, uh, she was a sewer. And she was the one. And, and honestly, I feel like the fact that I'm sewing now just blows her mind because she nagged me and nagged me. Yeah. Come on. You'll, you'll love it. Just try it. It works no, like mom, that sometimes. I'm not going to do that. But I remember she had made me one. And it was a uh, like kind of a Miss America Nice. Uh, costume. It was a beautiful white dress. It has a sash. I think I do have a picture somewhere. I'll have to see if I can find it to share with you guys. But I just remember feeling like the most amazing, like just walking down yeah. the street, going up to the houses. And I was probably like maybe three or four. It's like one of my first memories as a kid of Aww. wearing this beautiful and it had like a red sash. And I think it said Aww. like Miss America or something like that on it. And I just remember loving it. And then the other one, this is funny. I'm going to date myself. You guys probably aren't familiar with Underoos. Have oh, we're familiar of, with them. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm just checking, just checking. But I can remember, this is a funny side story real quick. I had gotten my first pair of underoos. 
Wonder Woman, of course. Of course. Like, and what underwears ruse were were basically just underwear. It was like a top and, you know, uh, panties, basically, that uh, were in costume. And so you would wear them underneath everything. And I remember in first grade getting in so much trouble because I showed Jimmy Johnson my Wonder Woman underwear. <laughs> I, mean, I went to Catholic you school. Oh, and, yeah. oh, my goodness. I was pegged in first grade. They're like, oh, she's the troublemaker right there, showing her under, <laughs> oh, under ruse to everybody. So, yeah. So, sorry. Just a funny side story. But I thought that was a costume. Like, I yeah. literally was yeah. like, I going to wear these everywhere and I just was like so proud of them and then my mom was like no 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 you can't those are not that's those not, are not a for costume showing up. exactly well you just reminded me and I, I do have to give a shout out for to my mom who did some sewing for me um, more as I got older but when I was uh, two I also went as Wonder Woman for Halloween mm-hmm. and she sewed little she got me little blue shorts and sewed little stars on them and Put, put, you know, maybe a little felt headband and everything. And I'm sure there are pictures of that. So that's probably going to end up in the show notes, guys. Nice. It was so cute. I was real cute. Oh, I love it. Um, all right. Plans for Halloween this year. All right. Well, I already mentioned uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Parker, you know, her and her. Well, actually, this was the big ordeal in the houses because they for the longest time, they weren't allowed to wear costumes to school mm. and they did a dance. And then so it was one costume, you know, for Halloween because they would just all go to the dance and wear that. Well, now they've changed it where the kids, they got rid of the dance and they can wear their costumes to school. So, of course, Parker was like, oh, that means two costumes, one for school and one oh for Halloween God. night. And I was like, <laughs> oh, great. Nope. No, Parker, that's so, not how it works. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I lost that argument big time. So her and her friend are actually going to be at school. They're dressing up as Mad Max and Eleven from Stranger nice. Things. And she's actually going to help her uh, help her friend make the Mad Max um, costume because she wants to make the shirt and do all that. So I think I probably will kind of see what I can do to help them out and, yeah. and put that together. Um, and then for the night... Oh my gosh, what are they going to be doing now? My blank, my mind just went completely blank. I know she was looking at like the Nightmare Before Christmas because mm-hmm. that's a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she was looking at doing potentially Sally mm-hmm. as one of the costumes. Oh, Cute. I know what it was. And this is actually, I think I am going to get to do some sewing stuff. Um, they want to go as zombie superheroes. Nice. So I think we're going to take her um, uh, Captain Marvel costume that she had done and she, we're going to rip it up and shred it and 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 kind of do some fun stuff with that. And then uh, her friend's mom is going to do their uh, you know hair and makeup and stuff. Mm-hmm. Nice. So we're excited. Yeah. So. That's awesome. That's a lot of costume changes. and Yeah. It's a long day. But, yeah. You know, yeah. it is. It's our national holiday in our house. Yeah. So it's yeah. all yep. good. <laughs> I know. Every year we talk about doing a group costume because we, there are five of us. Um, and we've talked about doing labyrinth before because mm. I've seen a couple of I've seen some good family labyrinth costumes. We had we talked for about ten minutes about doing like a Pee Wee's Playhouse group costume because mm-hmm. my kids are really into that show. Thank you, Netflix. <laughs> um, and then, but we're circling back around to potentially doing the Adams Family this year because oh, they've got um, a movie coming out too, the new one. Yeah, there's it? a new movie coming out. Oh my out. gosh, I didn't uh, know oh, that. Yeah, no, and you should see the style of it. It's so cool. Cool. Yeah, I'll no, check it out. That's a good. I one. mean, we'll see because I think we talk about this, and then at the last minute, my daughter inevitably changes her mind and wants mm-hmm. to do whatever it is she wants to do. So we'll see, but we're starting there. How about you, Kate? Well. I'm going to be in Vienna on Halloween. Ooh. Oh, nice. Um, I'm not quite sure. We, we did a little bit of talking about what Halloween is in Austria. Um, it sounds like it's, it did not start out this way, but it's getting a little bit more Americanized. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm probably not going to take a full costume. That's not part of your capsule? It's not uh, part of my capsule. Well, I'm sorry. I just, well, maybe I'll add it. Have a no, we no, no. <laughs> no, not doing it. <laughs> um, but I will probably come up with some little thing that I can add. I think there's a there's a famous uh, amusement park in Vienna, the, the Prater. And I think we might be going to the Prater on um, on Halloween. So um, I'll, I'll think of some little thing to do. Um, it may a be bad nod. ears, cat yeah. ears, something, just something I can do that a little playful. Yeah, bows yeah. to Halloween, but I won't even be answering the door. I'll have to put have my mom put a sign up there or something that says, "Sorry, guys, out of town. <laughs> Please yeah. don't knock at my door. You'll scare the cats." <laughs> no. Well, one last thing. Um, just wondering if either of you have any words of advice for in terms of planning for people like me who have big aspirations and wait till the last minute. Um. Well, for you, people like me. 
I mean, I will take I mean, personal for, tips. For, for you, I would say just just do it because you you that's how you sew. You just do it. Yeah. And so you just need to, to do it early so that you don't do it late. <laughs> I would say just be on the lookout for like the little detail things because yeah. a lot of times you'll spend so much time on like one big part of the costume mm-hmm. and nobody notices that and then they'll notice you know one little like your cane or this or mm-hmm. that you know so right. it's like don't forget about those little detailed things because I yeah. think a lot of times those really do just you know add that special touch yeah mm-hmm. yeah for sure cool. I just need to I need to plot the course and and make it happen this year mm-hmm. so I'm on the lookout for Morticia-esque I was patterns. just envisioning you as Morticia. <laughs> oh, my God. She would be gorgeous. Oh. I know. Well, we'll have to figure out something. Um, all right. I think I think we should um, stop there. Yeah. Shall I'm, we move on to our sojas? Yeah. I'm super inspired. Feeling super inspired. inspired. All right. As always. So our sojo, as many of you I'm sure know, is what is inspiring us right now and making us feel like sewing. So Amanda's inspired. Amanda, what's your sojo? Well, now it's Halloween and Morticia. Um, I might have to do a mood board or something. (laughs) Um, But I'm still really inspired by my London capsule that I'm putting together. I had a a really detailed list, and I have completely spun off from that, and I'm just <laughs> making whatever I want to make for that, And but I'm having a lot of fun with it and kind of enjoying being less of a planner and just, you know, sewing for the fun and kind of the whimsy of it. So, well, I'm, I'm interested to see what I actually end up with. Me too. Yeah. Will, yeah. You, will you do like a blog post about I'll it? I'll do when a, done? yeah, I will. Okay, cool. How about you, Ginger? What's your sojo? You ladies are my sojo. Uh, <laughs> honestly, uh, you know, you, like I said, you guys have introduced me to a whole new world, and Amanda has been wonderful at finding different independent pa- pattern makers that she's like, ooh, this looks like you, and this looks like you, and this looks like you. And I, I, I joked with her the other day. I was like, you're like my pattern drug dealer. I was like, she you're just a very she's well-dressed just like that, you guys. <laughs> I'm, a dealer. I'm, I'm pushy with it. Yeah, that, that's I, um, Amanda's thing. I, I really loved it. her response. She was like, I got the patterns you need. That's what I do. <laughs> so, but yeah. So we've got one in particular that I'm working on. It's a um, a, a dress that is – it has a, it's a shirt dress basically. Yes. And we're all doing different variations of it. Yes. And you guys invited me to do it too. So that has been so much fun. I spent all weekend this past weekend just putting my pattern together. I'm ready nice. to go. So all I need is the fabric. And, and oh, my God, I am just loving it. You guys can like feel my energy, I hope, because we, I am. I'm so yes. excited about doing this. I love this. I love I love that initial excitement. And yeah. Just yeah, being around it has is kind of awesome. Yeah, there's reminding nothing me like, why I love it. There's nothing about there's nothing like being excited about a brand new pattern. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Kate? So for me, I am plugging away at my Vienna wardrobe. Um, I have a lot more time than it sounds like because remember we're recording this like a month early. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm down to three more pieces that I need to finish as of this recording. I've got one of them cut out, a pair of pants. I've got fabric coming in for my cardigan. I have picked out my fabric and prepped my pattern for my um, – Last shirt. And right now I'm working very hard to convince myself that I don't need to add extra things into my capsule wardrobe, which is why I was trying not to add a costume into my capsule wardrobe because I keep thinking, ooh, I should add a pair of like ponty pants that I can wear on the plane and are super comfortable. Yes. And I should add a couple t shirts for the plane so they're super comfortable because I'm going to be on the plane for like, you know, 16 hours or something. So, um, but I'm trying not to let myself get into that or at least not until I finish what I've already got on the list. So down to three things, guys. I think I might pull this off. That's my sojo. You, you can, can do, do it. it. You can do and it. And in the meantime, I'll be whispering in your ear, you should make one of these for your capsule. She does that, you guys. I do. She totally does. She's almost convinced me to make a um, – what is the it? The Salzburg, Salzburg jacket, jacket from which Capsule is Studio. The, from the Capsule Studio. It's really cute, and I have some fabric that might work for it, and it won't fit with my capsule color-wise, so I'm not going to do it unless I have extra time that I might. I'm going to keep working on you. I know mm-hmm. you are. Yes, I will. Well, let's um, let's end with Sew and Tell, and going along with this episode's theme, we want to know, what's your dream costume 
We are going to be reading the answers um, on Instagram Live on October 17th. Um, you can answer on um, on our Instagram feed at SoIntelPod. You can email us. That's SoIntelPodcast at PeakMediaProperties.com. Um, or you can answer on the show notes page and let us know what's your favorite. What are you making? Help us keep this ball rolling so we actually end up with some awesome Halloween costumes this year. Or at least, and yes, give me some ideas about something that's going yeah. to fit in my luggage and be easy to wear. <laughs> I have costumes. I love it. Yes, <laughs> costumes. a new Ooh, thing. There we go. Oh, now I've got a whole article popping up in my, <laughs> oh no. All right, well thanks guys for listening to me ramble about theater stuff. I don't do that very often, but I really appreciate that you let me do it this time. Oh no, I thought it was, re- it's really interesting. I, should I love do, it. Maybe I should do it more often. You Definitely. You Definitely. Should. And thank you so much to Ginger for joining us. It was so nice to it have you here. It was lovely to have you. Please bring me back. I know I'm a poor Meg substitute, but oh my goodness, <laughs> I loved it. I would have loved to be in here and chat with Meg too. So please yeah. invite me back. We'll do this it was again. awesome. Definitely. Sure. We d- well, we've got a lot of travel happening in the next couple months, so it very well might happen. Keep <laughs> me in your back pocket. <laughs> we will. We will. All right. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening. Happy stitching. Happy stitching. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at peakmediaproperties.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer our sewandtell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Our consulting producer is Ron Doyle, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. <laughs>